update on Brooks's surgery. If you missed the original video, I have a whole video talking about why he needed the surgery and what was going to go down. So they were planning to take out his tonsils and his adenoids and then potentially tubes in his ears because he has had a history of a lot of fluid in his ears. But his doctor said that just removing the tonsils and adenoids might be enough help to just keep the fluid out of his ears. He didn't want to put tubes... Did you try I was again? not talking to you, Siri. He did not want to go ahead and put the tubes in his ears unless it was absolutely necessary because with tubes, there's like extra restrictions on, you know, making sure water doesn't get in them and swimming and different things. So he was just like, we'll just see what happens. We went in for the surgery. I was worried the most that the hardest part would be having him not eat the morning of surgery. We kept him up late the night before and luckily he slept in all the way until it was time to go, which was like 7.30 and then just picked him up and took him straight to the car. We had a check-in at the surgery center at 8.45 in the morning and then they took him back about 10.45 and the doctor said that they would put the gas on him first so it would help him like completely fall asleep and then they would put the IV in his arm, which is amazing. Luckily, he didn't even have to know anything about any of that. He went back had the surgery. It took about 45 minutes because they were doing tonsils and adenoids and then potentially tubes. And they also were planning to draw blood so they could send it off for allergy testing in the meantime. So when they came back to get us, we went to see him. Um, he did better waking up from anesthesia than I expected. I talked to him a lot about that beforehand. Like, hey, you might feel really confused. Probably won't remember that we've talked about this, but why not just go ahead and let you know. He was complaining of his IV hurting when he woke up because I think he just didn't really know. We hadn't told him about that because that was the part that we were like, if they put that in beforehand, he's going to flip out. How's your arm? You got a little, got a little blood on there. It's okay. But now you're ready to get your clothes on and get out of here, huh? You're so strong and brave. Yes. You did such a you good did job. did a great job, buddy. Let me see if we can get you to here. He just said his throat felt weird. He kind of cried a little bit, but he wasn't too upset. And then the doctor came in and talked to us and said what they did end up doing was they removed his tonsils, which he said were huge and definitely needed to come out. He said for the adenoids, they found he had a bifid tip is what I believe he said it was called. I might get some of this mixed up because at this point my brain kind of like went what or is he talking about? I have no idea what he's talking about. And so it kind of checked out. But apparently it's when your uvula, the thing that hangs down in the back of your throat, has like a split to it. And he said it was just like a slight split. But when it has that split, it's like, I don't remember if he said it's more like dangerous or more difficult to remove the adenoids. But he said he was able to partially remove his adenoids. Like I think he said the top part, which is the part that would cause pressure on his sinuses and his ears and all of that stuff. He said if he continues to have like different problems, then they could potentially go in and try to do something else about it, but that it can be dangerous, difficult. I don't remember what he said to remove the whole thing due to the way that they're like connected with the bifid tip. I might have gotten that all wrong, but it's spelled B-I-F-I-D if you would like to look it up for yourself. So that's that. He did not do the tubes in his ears because he said there was not any fluid in his ears on that day. Up until the surgery, he had Brooks taking Pepsid, just the 10 milligram little tablet, not the Pepsid that you get that you chew up and it has all the other antacid stuff in it, and Nasacort nose spray. So the combination of that, um, I think I had talked about in my last video, he said it's supposed to help with something to do with the adenoids. I guess it like helps reduces swelling due to inflammation, allergens or whatever, the swelling and stuff in there and get the fluid off of his ears, which is why there wasn't fluid in his ears the day of. But that gives me hope that the surgery will actually be helpful because if that was helpful at the time, then removing them hopefully will be helpful too. Since he's had the surgery, he has not been congested, snotty or anything at all. And he's taken zero allergy medicine. As far as him coming out of the surgery, he did great. Um, stayed in recovery for about an hour and then we were cleared to go home. Hey, there you go. Gotcha. Good job, man. You got it, buddy. Right, good job, dude. You got him. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Oh, that's gonna hurt. How's that applesauce taste? Good? All right. Okay, this is getting kind of long, so I'll post another video giving the update on how the recovery has gone.